Why, hello there, TTRPG enjoyers. I am Sajochi, and I like to play tabletop games. In case it wasn't obvious, my channel has been a bit busy with Pokemon tabletop content lately. Well, only Pokemon tabletop content as of the time of this recording. So I figured it may be time for me to make a bit of a player's guide to hopefully teach some new players how to get into the magical system of Pokemon Tabletop United. Now, the best way to learn about the system is obviously to play, but that's a little hard to do through a video. So I'm going to do the best I can to teach you the basics and explain some of the rules as we go along. A little disclaimer, I am going to stick to Raw as close as I can. However, as with any TTRPG, rules are always up to interpretation. Talk to your GM and your group about any rulings that you may do. Every table is going to run the game differently and that is perfectly okay. Alright, enough of wasting your time. Let's get right into it. You, as the player, will be taking control of a character in whatever world your GM is running. That's standard TTRPG operation. For this guide, we will just talk about a standard campaign where you play a trainer who catches and raises Pokémon. Just like the video games, and to an extent the anime, you are limited to six Pokémon on an active team, and you will also be managing these Pokémon like you would do in the video games. We'll get into this a bit more later in the video. For now, let's go right into character creation. I will be using the fancy PTU sheet, which will handle most of the heavy lifting when creating the character. A link to the mega doc that actually has this sheet will be provided in the description. PTU separates character creation into several parts. First, we have skills. These are going to determine how well your character can do specific tasks that requires rolling against a DC. They also determine what features, edges, and items you get access to, as well as how well you can perform these types of actions. Second, we got our features, which are going to determine your trainer classes and provide various actions your trainer can do. Third are the edges, which I know in the book they're introduced after skills, but the easiest way to explain these is that they are like features, but more focused towards expressing your skills and growing them. Fourth are your combat stats, which are the six basic stats in every Pokemon game. These are going to determine how well you can deal or resist damage, how fast you are, and how much damage you could take before fainting. Last is going to be your derived stats, which are going to determine what are called your basic capabilities. These are going to be things like how far you can move in a turn, what type of movement you have, how much you can carry, how far you can jump, and a lot of other things as you level up. With a combination of these five things, we are going to make our first character, who's going to be a standard Pokemon trainer who wants to be the very best like no one ever was. I actually hate that I made that joke, but we're going to keep it in. Starting off character creation, we're going to get into skills. There are 17 skills in the game, and they're separated into three categories. Your body skills, your mind skills, and your spirit skills. I'm going to go section by section and go over what each skill is and kind of what they do. Starting with the body skills, we have acrobatics, which is going to determine how well your trainer can balance, jump, and dodge. Next is combat. This is going to cover how to use weapons, as well as your understanding of battle techniques and tactics. Some combat maneuvers, which I'm going to explain a little bit later, require a combat skill roll to pull off. Next is Intimidate. This is your ability to appear menacing and unsettling. Then we got Stealth, which is the ability to remain unseen, and allows you to perform roguish techniques like picking a pocket or picking a lock. The last body skill is Survival, and this is going to cover things like finding food in the wild, and tracking specific targets. It could also make traveling a lot easier on yourself. Our next category is going to be your mind skills, and this is going to be things that covers your smarts, with the first skill being general education. This is an expression of your general knowledge and covers things like basic arithmetic, literacy, and pretty much anything that doesn't require any specialization to learn well. Next is medicine education, and this is going to cover the use of medicines, first aid, physiology, and biology, and it's the most common skill to use when treating injuries. Next is occult education, which is going to be the knowledge of things that are supernatural in nature, like hexes, ghosts, magic, and even psychic powers. Next is Pokemon education, your knowledge of Pokemon, from their types, their moves, their abilities, pretty much anything related to Pokemon, if the name was not obvious. Then there's technology education, which you can argue is like engineering. This is going to cover some crafting edges and the use of certain items. It also includes anything to do with modern technology like hacking computers or repairing machinery. Moving on from education, we're going to go through the rest of the mind skills, with the first one being Guile. This is your ability to conceal your intentions and also lie. It's also going to cover disguising yourself. The last mind skill is Perception. This is going to be your awareness of your environment. It covers your physical senses, like touch, sight, smell, and hearing. It's also going to determine how well you can spot minute details and things. And finally, we're going to get into the spirit skills. 
with the first one being Charm. Charm is your general ability to be persuasive as well as agreeable. It can also affect how others respond to you naturally. This can include your ability to negotiate with opposing forces. Charm isn't always just flirting. Next is Command, which I would argue is going to be the most important skill if you're going to be a Pokemon trainer. This is your ability to lead others, mainly with your Pokemon. It can also allow you to take charge easily in situations with no leaders or when dealing with an unruly individual. Next up is Focus. This is your character's ability to stay on task under pressure and can be seen as your character's resolve. It also covers using supernatural abilities. And finally, Intuition. This is your gut instinct, your inner voice, that little piece that says, hey, something's not right here. In PTU, every character, including Pokemon, has these skills, and how well you do with them is determined by six ranks. Pathetic, Untrained, Novice, Adept, Expert, and Master, with 1d6 being the lowest and 6d6 being the highest. The higher the rank of your skill, the more d6 dice you get for your rolls. With 1d6 being the lowest at Pathetic, and 66 being the highest at Master. At level 1 for your trainer character, you select one skill to make Adept, one skill to make Novice, and three skills to make Pathetic. For now, since we want to play a regular trainer who wants to just raise Pokemon, the most important skill we're going to have is Command. So, going back to the sheet, I'm going to go up to Command, and I'm going to turn it rank 4 for Adept. For our Novice skill, we're going to go with Perception, which is going to turn that into a rank 3 skill. And then for the three pathetic skills, I made Occult Education, Guile, and Focus rank 1, because I kind of see this trainer as being a little scatterbrained. Now I'm going to get into features and edges. Starting at level 1, you get four features and four edges that you meet the requirements for. You also get your choice of a training feature, and you don't need to meet the requirements to take that training feature. I always recommend to start with features, because this is going to determine your trainer's classes. Pokemon Tabletops United, it's kind of expected to multi-class, and you can only take four features that has the class tag. Feel free to adjust as needed to get the right combinations of features and edges to fit your character. The first feature I want to take is Ace Trainer, because it is a simple class that will allow me to boost the power of my Pokemon. Ace Trainer requires that we have at least Novice Command. Since our command is currently at a depth, we can go into the Features tab on the Character Sheet and just type Ace Trainer under the Feature section. Every time you add a feature on the Features tab, it's also going to give you the description there, so that way you have something to reference. I also recommend typing the feature under the Features column on the Trainer tab in the Character Sheet, as that's going to help you keep track of what you have available to you. And as you level up, the numbers on the sheet will actually increase, so that way you know what you're supposed to take at what level. The next feature I want to take is Capture Specialist so I can reliably capture Pokemon and get my team created as fast as possible. However, I do not meet the requirements to take this feature. Currently, Capture Specialist requires Acrobatics, Athletics, Stealth, or Survival at Novice, and Guile or Perception at Novice. I currently have Perception at Novice, which is okay, but I'm going to need to take an edge to improve one of my other skills in order to meet that requirement. And the way to fix this is to go to the Skill Edges under the Edges page and to take Basic Skills. Basic Skills allows me to take a skill from Pathetic to Untrained rank or Untrained to Novice rank. I'm going to go to the Edges tab on the character sheet and just put Basic Skills at the top, and under Notes, I'm going to put Athletics because I want to make Athletics Untrained to Novice. And then back on the trainer sheet, I'm just going to type basic skills under the edges and in parentheses just type in athletic and also increase athletics from rank 2 to rank 3 to make a novice. Now we just double check here, make sure that we meet everything. We have athletics at novice and we have perception at novice, which means that we can definitely take this feature. We're going to go back to the features tab and just put capture specialist right here, get the description. And we're also going to add it to the feature column on the trainer tab just to keep track of where we're at. Capture Specialist allows me to take two capture techniques that I meet requirements for and add them onto my character. Since I want to catch Pokemon more easily, I'm going to take Fast Pitch and Tools of the Trade so that I can throw Pokeballs as a priority move and to make it easy to overcome a Pokemon's AC when throwing a Pokeball, plus other bonuses depending on how I found that Pokemon. These will be added under the extra tabs on the character sheet located under Techniques, Talents, Lessons, Achievements, and Manipulations. So we're taking Fast Pitch and Tools of the Trade. We'll finish up our features by taking Elite Trainer and Critical Moment under Ace Trainer since we meet the requirements for them. Elite Trainer simply just gives us an extra training feature to choose from, picking from Agility, Brutal, Focus, or Inspire Training. I'm going to go with Agility Training. Critical Moment is an action that we can take that triples the bonuses from our trainings for one round in combat. I've already filled it out on the sheet here so that you can see what it looks like when you have a filled out feature column. Any bonus features that you get will just be put under the bonus feature slash edges from classes area. 
And then the last thing we're taking in regards to features is Brutal Training as our free training feature. We don't need to meet the requirements to take Brutal Training, so we just get that automatically. And trainings are actually super useful. I recommend reading up on this section, but I'll give a little bit of a summary here. Trainings are actions that you can perform outside of combat and in combat. If you're training your Pokemon, you give them a semi-permanent boost that will last until the end of the scene, depending on which one that you apply. Agility training makes your Pokemon faster by giving them plus one bonus to their movement capabilities, as well as an increased initiative. Focus training allows your Pokemon to hit more, as well as do better on their skill checks. Brutal training makes it easier for your Pokemon to get critical hits. Inspired training makes it easier for your Pokemon to evade attacks, as well as succeed on saves. And right under where it says training feature, I'm just going to type brutal training. Pokemon can only benefit from one training feature applied through the training action at a time. However, if you use the training feature like an order, which is a specific action in combat, you apply the benefits of that training automatically to your Pokemon. And these do stack with any regular trainings that you applied earlier. Now we're going to pick the rest of our edges. We have three left to pick from. As I explained earlier, these are specific expressions of your character's skill, or they'll boost your character's skills as decided. Since this trainer is going to be the very best, we should take edges that allow them to train Pokemon easily, as well as make their athletic and command roles have a higher chance of success. The second edge that I'm taking is Train to Reserve, which allows us to apply an action called Experience Training to more Pokemon at once, thus increasing the speed in which they can gain strength. The third edge is going to be Skill Enhancement, which I'm going to apply to Command to give it a plus 2 bonus. And finally, gonna go with Categoric Inclination to boost all Spirit skills by plus 1, which results in getting a nice plus 3 bonus on my Command. And just like the features, I'm going to add them right here, Train to Reserves, Skill Enhancement for Command, and Categoric Inclination for Spirit. Don't forget to fill out the edges column on the character sheet, and don't forget to apply the bonuses, which I'll show you right here. Anything in green is a spirit skill, so we know that we have a plus one on all skills that are in green. Command gets a plus three because of the combination of skill enhancement and categoric inclination. And with that, we're finally done with the features and the edges, but now we're going to go into our combat stats. At level one, you're given 10 level up points to put into HP, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, and speed. You start with 10 base HP and 5 base stats for everything else. Speed is arguably going to be the most important stat for a trainer in a regular Pokemon Gym Challenge, but if you're playing in a game that has trainer combat, don't forget about survivability. Since this is going to be a pretty standard campaign, I'm also going to expect there to be some trainer combat, so I'm going to add 5 points to speed, 2 points to defense, 2 points to special defense, and 1 point to HP. Next thing to do is to check your features to see if you get a plus stat tag on them. If you have any, you also get a bonus point to that stat from the feature. So one more point is added to speed under the feat section. After you figure out your combat stats, you're going to determine what your derived stats are. And thanks to the sheet, those are going to be automatically calculated. But for the sake of a player's guide, I'll quickly go over the basics. Your health is your trainer's level times two plus your HP times three plus 10. If we look at the sheet here, I have a total of 45 max HP because I have 11 base HP at level 1. The more you invest in HP, the more health you get, and you gain more health as you level. Simple as that. Power determines how much you can lift. Power starts at 4 and increases by 1 if your athletic skill is novice rank or higher, and by an additional 1 if your combat skill is adept or higher. Keep in mind, you don't actually gain more than one power by having a higher rank of the required skills. It's only one point increase this way. High jump is how many meters you can jump over easily, otherwise you'll need to make a skill check. It starts at zero and you gain one point if acrobatic is a depth rank, an additional point if it's at master. You can also increase your high jump by one if you take a running start. Long jump is just how far you can jump, and it's equal to half your athletics rank. Overland is how many meters you can move a turn. The calculation is 3 plus the total ranks of your acrobatics and athletic skill divided by 2. Twin speed is always half your overland speed. And if we go back to the combat tab on the trainer sheet, we can see that our overland is 5, our range is 7, high jump is 0, long jump is 1, swim is 2, and we have a power of 5. And with that, our trainer character is complete and ready to play. But there is one last thing we need to determine, and it's arguably the most important part. Picking your starter. Now, your GM will usually provide a list of starter Pokemon, or you could ask to have a certain Pokemon as a starter. Either way, in a standard campaign, you are gifted one Pokemon at the beginning. Now we're going to head to the starter tab on the character sheet. And to make things a lot easier, I'm just going to pick a standard starter. And I pick Bulbasaur. 
Pokemon are built similar to player characters with a few key differences. Skill rankings are dependent on the Pokemon themselves, but can be improved later with training features. Pokemon have access to something called Poke Edges, which are special abilities that can be learned through training, and Pokemon usually start with a wider range of capabilities that includes things like Dark Vision, Teleportation, and even Ignoring Death. Similar to the games, Pokemon still get the standard base stats, abilities, moves, and natures. I'll touch on all this in a bit, but we're going to go ahead and build out Bulbasaur at level 5. I'm going to use the updated Galar decks from Data Ninja here. Pokemon levels are calculated by the total experience they have acquired. The experience chart in Chapter 5 and the reference document shows that a level 5 Pokemon has 40 experience. So on the sheet, in order to level up Bulbasaur, I need to put 40 in the total experience tab, which will bring Bulbasaur up to level 5. Next is Nature, which is an expanded list that also includes natures that add to health or can subtract from health. I'm just going to leave it at Hardy by default. Your GM may allow you to choose a nature or make you roll for your nature, which is just rolling 2d6 and using the first roll to determine your positive stat and the second roll to determine your negative stat. Now we get 15 level up points to distribute as we see fit. Currently there is a special rule that says how you're supposed to distribute these stats called base stat relation, but no one really uses it, so I'm not going to do it for this character. You can read up more on it in the Pokemon chapter if you'd like to incorporate it into your game. I'm going to put 5 points into HP, 3 points into defense, special attack, and special defense, and finally 1 point in speed. My plan is to make Bulbasaur a little bulky while also being able to hit a little hard. I don't really care about speed at this moment. Next up, we'll choose abilities. Pokemon start with one basic ability under entering the Pokedex document and gain a new ability at level 20 and 40. Level 20 granting access to advanced abilities and level 40 granting access to high abilities. A Pokemon can have more than one ability in this game. Since Bulbasaur is at level 5, we have a choice between Chlorophyll and Overgrow. I'll simplify things and pick the first basic ability, which is Chlorophyll according to the document and we'll add it down here on the Abilities tab, taking care to choose the one that says Errata, because we're going to be playing with the latest Errata with this character. The last thing you'll have to do is to add moves to your Pokémon. Pokémon can have up to 6 moves at a time, with a maximum of 3 that are learned from Features, TMs, and Move Tutors. We won't have access to these moves at the start of the game, so Bulbasaur will get every level up move up to level 5, which is just Tackle and Growl. I've already added them right here to the sheet, so Bulbasaur is all set. Finally, after that long process of building your trainer and your Pokemon, you're finally ready to start playing PTU. From my own experience, the most confusing thing that new players struggle with is battles. And that just has to do with the action system, the different types of battles, and that you, the player, are controlling more than one character at a time during battle. I'm just going to make it easy for you, and I'm going to break down the actions that you get to take during combat. First off, we have standard actions, which covers attacking, using items, throwing pokeballs, using moves, or can be used to perform shift and swift action. Shift action is how you move about the battlefield, it's used for switching pokemon, and it's also used for handing an item to an ally mid-combat. Swift actions are usually marked on a feature, ability, and a move, and they are considered actions that don't really take too much time. Free actions take no time at all, and they usually have a requirement to trigger them. Extended actions are stuff that you do outside of combat because they'll take a lot of time to actually do. Doing any type of training and crafting is normally an extended action. Full actions are your standard and your shift action combined. These are also labeled on features and moves, so you don't really have to wonder what is a full action. It'll just say what it is. Priority actions allow you to act outside of initiative and take your turn between other character turns and interrupt actions allow you to take an action on another character's turn, usually after a triggering action happens. That's just the basics of what these actions sort of cover. For combat, every round, you and your Pokémon get one standard action, one shift action, and one swift action that you can use in any order you deem fit. You also get an unlimited number of free actions as long as you meet the requirements to use them. Just remember that free actions can typically be activated once per round or a few times per scene. The Combat Maneuver Attack of Opportunity is an example of a free action, but specifically says it can only be used once per round. Combat in Pokemon Tabletop is very important to the system, and by understanding the basics of what you can do with those four actions, learning the rest of the game will be easier. Trust me on that. Commonly, there are two types of combat, League Battles and Free-for-All Battles. For Free-for-All Battles, when initiative is called, the turn order goes from the character with the highest speed starting the round to the character with the slowest speed ending the round. You do not roll for initiative in this game. Your initiative is determined by your speed, and speed becomes a very good investment if you want to act faster in the initiative order. Continuing for free-for-alls, trainers and Pokemon are going to be ordered in fastest to slowest from the top of the round to the end of the round. 
Sometimes this means that your Pokemon may be able to act before you even do. A little bit of a pro tip, orders are considered priority actions and you can issue them on your Pokemon's turn even if you act last in combat. League battles operate a little differently as they'll be regulated and have specific rules. Initiative for a league battle also works differently as well, with trainers starting the round with the slowest to fastest trainer and then Pokemon going after the trainers from fastest to slowest. This allows quicker trainers to react to whatever the slowest trainer is doing and are able to act accordingly if need be. As I said, league battles are highly regulated, though some actions might say they are not league legal, which is basically saying a trainer cannot directly harm a Pokemon during a league battle or use specific features or items. Orders are always league legal. There are also Pokemon contests, but that will take an entire video to explain itself, and this one is already pretty long. Something I wanted to quickly touch on is combat maneuvers. Besides commanding your Pokemon in battle, there are some things that you as a trainer can do and that is combat maneuvers here. One of the more common ones are probably going to be Attack of Opportunity, which you and a Pokemon can do. I do recommend reading up on combat maneuvers because they can make battles a lot more interesting. Trainers and Pokemon can use combat maneuvers. So give this a quick look through and see what stands out, maybe you'll want to use it in your game. The very last thing I'm going to go over for this guide is what you can do outside of combat which is normally going to be extended actions. One of the most common extended actions you can do is training your Pokemon. This involves spending at least one in-game hour to boost the abilities of your Pokemon using a training feature you have access to. These trainings stay until the next scene and will provide the greatest buffs right off the bat. Plus, you can apply them to all of your Pokemon in one training session. I did mention earlier that Pokemon can only benefit from one training feature at a time, but they do stack with orders, so go nuts with it. But one important training feature that everyone can do without needing a special feature is experience training. You take some Pokemon you need to get leveled up, and you spend time training them to earn experience. The number of Pokemon you can train this way will be equal to your command rank, and each Pokemon will gain experience equal to half their level, plus a bonus based on your command rank, which is plus 5 for novice and adept rank, plus 10 for expert or master rank, and plus 15 if you have virtuoso applied to command, which is essentially a rank 8 for that skill. So taking Bulbasaur as an example, it will gain 2 experience points from its level, plus an additional 5 from our character's command rank, which means Bulbasaur will need 3 more experience to get to level 6. And finally, the last things that you can do as extended actions are applying TMs to learn new moves, applying abilities from features, or giving your Pokemon Poke Edges to boost their capabilities or alter moves. All of these cost tutor points that your Pokemon earns as it levels up. Do not ignore any of these. They are going to help you fine-tune your Pokemon the way you want them. And there you go, you are now ready to just start playing the game. The rest of it is going to be what you expect from TTRPGs. You do some roleplay, you roll the dice, everybody cheers because you got a crit. I hope this guide helps you in learning how to play the game as a player, and I really hope that it gets you a little more interested in the game. It is really fun. The community Discord is also available if you have any additional questions, and I'm going to put the link to the Discord in the description as well. I had a lot of fun recording this guide, and I do plan on making a GM's guide, so if you're interested in running the game, I do recommend checking that out once it does come out. So until next time, I'm Sajochi, and may your dice never betray you.